Hello and welcome. I'm Natan Berhofsky here with another Peak Performance Talk. This week, we'll be looking at Wednesday's Story in a Drill. And today, we have a very interesting story. Usually, I'll mix it up and alternate week after week so that some weeks will go deep back into the past 10, 20 years or more sometimes, um, reflecting on cases that I did back in the, the beginning of my career when I started working out with people. Or on alternating weekends, we'll take a look, um, alternating Wednesdays, we'll take a look at more, I guess, more recent clients and, and more current topics, even though it, it seems to be timeless. The, the issues that we have seem to keep recurring. So it's an interesting perspective to take a look, whether we're looking at cases from back then or cases from now. You won't be able to tell just by the story. Today's story comes specifically um, with a lady who was a very, very high performer in multiple areas. For her, she was on, and I'm, I'm changing the, um, the actual name of the sport that she was on, uh, just to protect her identity, even though this is going back about mm, 20, 25 years, just for, for um, people's privacy and such. So for her, um, she was on the national, uh, let's call it volleyball team. But she was also a Crown Prosecutor. And for her, she was very, very busy. So as a, an elite, um, educated, very driven, very focused woman during the day, and then with very little resources and time and energy left, um, how incredibly focused she was and able to accomplish at such a, a very high level uh, to be on the national team. And what was fascinating was that her husband um, was also a lawyer. He was a defense lawyer, and he was also on the, again, not the true sport, but let's call it volleyball, also a member of the volleyball team. So she was on the women's national team, he was on the men's national team. And for him, he sought me out um, for some peak performance issues, specifically helping him visualize uh, creatively better in a, in a peak performance manner. And those are things that we'll look at in, on another time. What was neat was after a few sessions, he right away said, ah, I need you to work with my wife. And I said, sure, what's her problem? Because once he explained, you know, she's such an amazing lady, this, that, and the other, and I was like, wow, what, what, what do we got to work with? And he said, um, claustrophobia, for lack of a better word, and a very, very extreme case. So extreme so that at, at one time, um, she had she'd been going through a car wash, and freaked out in the middle of it and opened the door and jumped out. Did about $11,000 of damage to her car, um, hurt herself and got injured in the process as well. But just really had a hard time in, in small places that she was confined and stuck. And so he came to me because uh, next week, uh, back then, they were gonna be over in Paris, France uh, for the nationals in, again, volleyball. And so representing Team Canada, both for men and women, and her being extremely claustrophobic, there was a train ride that needed to take place through a, a famous uh, Parisian tunnel. And it would be black, and it would be dark and weirdly noisy, and uncomfortable for normal people, but downright terrifying for somebody who had um, issues with those type of conditions. And he knew that she wouldn't make it, and he didn't want to hurt her or her standing or the country and and those type of things so there was a lot of weight with it and I asked how long do we have to work together and he said we have one day <laughs> we're leaving tomorrow so we did some very very extreme work and I can tell you that a couple days later I received a long distance phone call and it was the most wonderful news to hear. It was the lady calling me from the train that they were on. I don't know how expensive that phone call must have been um, in, in Paris. And she was going through the tunnel and she had already gone through several before and it was no problem. And she flew over there and it was no problem. And she had just been so elevated and lifted and felt so wonderful in such a, a very short period of time that she was able to conquer that fear. And she did wonderfully, um, both for herself and for her team and for the country in that, in that national championships several decades ago. 
But what was incredible was how she was able to so quickly, as soon as the mind truly grasps and believes and accepts that new reality, it's instant. There's no pangs of regret. There's no uh, distracting um, feelings of remorse or dissonance, you know, buyer's remorse or any of that. It's incredible. It's as if that was the all-encompassing belief all along. And as if you never knew any differently, even though it's a completely different way from what you had been thinking before. We did several hours of very, very intense therapy over several sessions, and that's not something I can repeat in a Wednesday story in a drill. But one of the one, um, one of the drills that we did work on that was, I would say, transformative for her was um, what I call the uh, lifeboat drill. And so if you remember some of the other work that we've been doing and in some of my vlogs and such, you'll remember how to give yourself a biofeedback breathing exercise, which is how we usually start most of the work. So you'll find your pulse, inhale with every beat of your pulse, one, two, three, hold at the top, one, two, three beats, exhale, one, two, three beats, Hold at the bottom one, two, three beats, and do this three times. When you finish, obviously with your eyes closed, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, at that point, the lifeboat drill lets you visualize and imagine, your, if you will, yourself on a lifeboat. And it's a rowing one, and it's one of those weird, you know, classical um, British Sherlock Holmes type dark stormy nights in the moors and there's fog and it's cold and it's dank and it's a little intimidating because it's dark around midnight or so and in front of you in this teeny little rowboat that you're in is a burlap sack a big potato sack a couple big heavy rocks and some rope when you get out deep and far to the middle of this marshy swampy lake you look in the bag and that's where you notice all the little pieces that are inside there little memories little fragments of an older you inside this bag is all the hate and the shame and the pain and the fear and the frustration that you've had associated with this memory, with this feeling. And so you pick up a big rock next to you, and you hold it over your head, and you smash it into the bag. And then you pick up the other one, and you do the same thing. And you pick up the rope, and you tie it tight around the top of that bag, pull it tight, and then you pick up the entire bag, Stand up over your head. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Know that when you drop the bag, know that when it releases, know that when it hits the water and slowly disappears from view, it and everything inside it is completely gone forever. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, gone from you. And all influence, gone from you forever. And let it go. Watch it, take a look at it, slowly sinks away. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, open your eyes, and find yourself back here, and back at peace. And that's the lifeboat drill. And that was today's Wednesday story in a drill. I'm Natan Verhofsky. I'm here for peak performance talk. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Take care.